by the Fire presents A Desperate Soul by Dave Smale. Read for you by the author. Chapter 23 It's been years since my last hug. Seated on the Bradley's front steps, Jacob's throbbing ribs and bandaged torso made sitting comfortably impossible. He scrolled through the latest dumbs on Dumb Down. Though there were a ton of new ones, there was nothing interesting. Surprisingly, no one was talking about Bean's arrest. Or perhaps it wasn't surprising. Everyone in that circle was likely in denial. He closed the application. Soon his mind wandered to Shayna. Dumb Down wasn't interesting, but she was. It wasn't just that he'd gotten her pregnant. She was so attractive and fiery. He liked that about her. Jacob tapped the Estupido app and quickly located her profile. Her beautiful face filled his screen. But still, no new post. Glass shattered. A scream. Jacob leapt to his feet and bolted through the front door momentarily forgetting the pain in his ribs. Within seconds, he was in the doorway of the kitchen, examining the scene. Billy was standing, hands on his hips, staring crossly out a window. Taylor sat with her hands over her face, shaking. Talitha was crying. There was water on the kitchen floor and broken glass. Uh, everything okay? Jacob asked. Nobody answered or even acknowledged him for a few moments. Now, now everything is not okay, Billy finally said. Uh, okay, I'll just go back outside then, Jacob said, turning to leave. No, it's... Talitha managed, holding up a staying hand. This, uh, sounds like a family thing, so I should probably... Jacob, it's fine. You're probably going to find out anyway. Plus, now that your grandma's gone, we basically are your family, Talitha said, tears continuing to stream down her face. She dabbed them with a napkin. It surprised him to hear Talitha say that. She barely knew him. Um... Okay, he replied. Basically, here's what happened, Talitha began. No, please, Taylor suddenly said. I don't want to hear it again. Mom, it happened to me, not you. You're my daughter, Taylor snapped. It's worse than if it happened to me. The pastor's wife shod in full transparent armor with sword and shield, broke down in tears. I can't. I can't. Taylor trailed off. She rose and left the room. Billy just stared at the wall. Talitha gave Jacob the super abbreviated version. In short, Bean had done something awful to her. He could fill in the blanks from there. Pastor Billy laid a comforting hand on her shoulder. It's going to be okay, sweetie. We all make mistakes. Talitha rose, brushing off his comment. I'll clean up the glass. Billy held his head as if a headache was coming on. Talitha picked up all the shards while Jacob grabbed a few paper towels and sopped up the water. Thanks, she said. As soon as they were done, Taylor swept back into the room. Her face was a wet mess of smeared mascara. Mom, Talitha said. I, Taylor, interrupted. I'm sorry I yelled at you. Like your dad said, it's going to be all right. We're here for you. Taylor and Talitha embraced, with Billy joining a moment later. Sobs emanated from all three of them, and they cried on each other's shoulders for several moments. Jacob stared at the grief-stricken family, unsure of what to do or say. After what seemed like an hour, they released. I'm a little surprised Ryan didn't say anything to us, Taylor said. I'm not, Billy replied. 
He promised, right? Talitha nodded. He wrote a song about you, Jacob said suddenly. The comment seemed out of place and the three of them stared at him, confused. Bean, I mean, Jacob clarified. Bean wrote a song about you. Talitha looked down. I know. I've heard it. You have? But it's only a few months old, Jacob said. Yeah, I got a flyer for one of your shows. So I worked up the courage to confront him. I was all set to do it after the show, but then I heard that song. It's pretty surreal hearing a song about yourself. That song was so weird. He wrote it in all like Shakespeare Old English, said Jacob. He wrote it to sound like the King James Bible. In the song, he's God, and I'm both his child and his slave. Considering what he'd done to me, it made me sick. I couldn't take it. I left. Jacob's jaw dropped. Had he known who and what the song was really about, he'd never have agreed to play it. Or be in a band with a rapist, for that matter. As if reveling in relief from her confessions, Talitha shared more details, stemming from the ordeal with Bean. She'd gotten into drugs, alcohol, partying, and even experimented with same-sex relationships. Oh, and you know how all those people from the youth ministry left? Talitha added, looking at her father. Her parents looked at each other, then nodded. That's... She paused, struggling to get the words out. That's my fault, too. What? How? Her father asked, surprised. Your youth ministry leader. The guy that was in charge of the teen ministry in the early 20s outreach? You mean Jeff? Yeah, he was pulling double duty. But he said he didn't mind. Jeez, that was a serious blow when he left, Pastor Billy said. Well, I didn't like him. He was... He was on to me. Knew I wasn't really saved. Plus, he was friends with Ryan. Ryan may have promised not to tell you guys, but I'm sure he told Jeff. So Jeff was probably upset with me for hurting Ryan and causing him to leave. I mean, I don't know for sure. <laughs> anyway, Jeff confronted me about not being saved one night. I got real mad at him. So I decided to get revenge. I... I spread a rumor that he'd slept with some of the girls in the teen ministry. It was really bad because a lot of them are minors. And he isn't. Billy and Taylor both looked mortified. Something occurred to Jacob. Was one of them a girl named Shana Hanneman? He asked. Talitha eyed him curiously. Yeah, yeah, it was. Why, you know her? Jacob nodded. Shana's social media posts came to his memory. Just when I thought I could trust people again, they stabbed me in the back. Figures. It all made sense now. That's awful, Taylor said. I know, Mom. I'm sorry, Talitha choked with emotion again. I'll make it my personal mission to find every one of the people I hurt and apologize to them. Slanda, Billy said, shaking his head. One of the most destructive things people can do. But now this has me wondering why we didn't hear something from Jeff. I mean, that's a pretty serious accusation. You'd think he'd at least call me and tell me it wasn't true, even if he was intent on leaving. Think about it from his perspective, Taylor answered. Your friend gets betrayed by the pastor's daughter, then leaves. Then a terrible rumor gets spread about you by the pastor's daughter. One that could result in your arrest. You think he knew it was you who started the rumor? Billy interrupted, directing the question at Talitha. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have been hard to figure out, she answered. And at that point, Jeff probably felt like he couldn't trust you or anyone at the church. Better to just leave and never look back, Taylor said. Okay, 
Okay, Billy said, considering his wife's words. The rumors spread like wildfire. I'd think it would have reached me eventually. I heard something about it a few weeks after he left, but I dismissed it as nasty gossip, said Taylor. I've never heard a thing about it. Wonder why, Billy said. Talitha sighed and looked at her father. <laughs> because, Dad, you're disconnected, she said. Billy screwed up his face. What? Taylor drew a breath and raised her eyebrows. That was one of the things I overheard people say about you in the teens group. That you're, you know, detached, disengaged. In fact, I remember Jeff saying something like that when he confronted me. He was like, your dad might be willfully ignorant of what you're doing and lots of other things, but I see what's going on. Billy's eyes widened. What? How? No way. Not with all the counseling I do. People must feel like they can trust me. I mean, they come to me, confide in me. I'm just telling you what Jeff said, Dad, Talitha said. He looked at Taylor. Is that true? Am I disengaged? Willfully ignorant? He asked. Taylor shrugged. Well, you didn't used to be. But lately, yeah, sorry, honey. Those people who come to you for counseling? Not sure if you've noticed, but it's basically the same 10 or 15 people over and over. Billy stared at her, speechless. But we can talk about that later. For now, we need to focus on Talitha, Taylor said. Dazed, Billy paused, then nodded. Yeah, he managed. I'm so sorry, guys, for everything, Talitha said, which prompted another round of embraces. We love you so much, sweetie, Taylor said. And God loves you, Billy added. Everything's going to be okay. He'll, he'll help you. Help us all. Through this. Jacob thought Talitha's confession was heartrending, but the display of forgiveness and affection from her parents was overwhelming. He was also moved to tears. The hugs and kisses continued for another five minutes at least, as Jacob looked on, envious. Finally, when emotion subsided, Pastor Billy asked, Would you like to press charges against Oscar? Talitha pondered for a few moments, dabbing a tissue at her eyes and nose. No, she said. If God and you guys can forgive me, I think I can forgive Bean. Huh? But wait, Jacob objected. Just because you forgive someone doesn't mean you can't still get justice. He needs to pay for what he did to you. You're right, Talitha said. But it also means I can count on God to bring justice. Huh? How? Jacob asked. I... Well, I don't exactly know. I'm just going off of some things I've heard my dad preach. She sighed and smiled and grasped her parents' hands. For now, I'm just happy to make things right between me and my family and God. One thing at a time. Something about Talitha's statement hit Jacob right in the gut. She put herself and her family through the proverbial ringer. Yet, she was now being embraced by the same people she disappointed. What was more, she somehow let go of all animosity she should justifiably hold against Oscar Bean Sepulveda. Jacob's eyes widened as the transparent spiritual body armor began forming on Talitha's head and chest. Taylor, Billy, and their daughter gathered for another group hug. Jacob couldn't take any more. He arose and left the kitchen, but stopped at the doorway. Seeing the pastor's daughter restored made him miss his grandma. He desperately wanted to see her again. He longed to apologize for the anguish through which he'd put her but he was suddenly overcome with the feeling that he'd never be able to. 
He knew from his experiences during the past week that everything the pastor and his grandmother had told him regarding spiritual matters was true. It was verifiable with his own eyes. His mother, father, unborn sister, and grandmother were all in heaven. But he certainly wasn't wearing any armor. Then again, he wasn't sure whether he had any demons chained to him. Maybe he just couldn't see his own armor. Nah, that's stupid. I'm not one of them. I'm not a Christian. I've got no armor. Bottom line. The problem wasn't just that he wasn't a Christian. It was that he didn't want to be one. He didn't want to be saved or born again. Though the things he'd seen the past few days were enough to scare the hell out of him. Perhaps it scared the hell into him. Jacob, Billy called. Huh? Jacob said, turning to face him. Bring it on in. Bring what on in? He means come here, said Taylor. Jacob approached apprehensively. When he got within a few paces, Billy reached out and pulled him into the group hug. Jacob stiffened. He'd not been hugged in years. The pain in his ribs screamed, but it was quickly overshadowed by how good it felt to be held by another human being. In this case, three others. Slowly the pain ebbed. Jacob's memory automatically searched for the last time he'd been involved in a group hug. He was seven. His mom and dad were hugging him, telling him to be good for his grandma Tilda while they went on their date, their final date. The emotions flooded. Jacob buried his face in Pastor Billy's shoulder and wept bitterly. Hey, it's Jacob. I'm not a real rock star, but I might loosely be based on the author, who's also not a rock star. Hey, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes and tell you about Anchor. If you haven't heard about it, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First off, it's free. Also, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast, like right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast so it can be heard on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership, and it's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm right now to get started. Hey guys, Dave here. Just wanted to make a quick announcement. If you head over to my website right now, davesmail.com, there'll be a pop-up to ask you to join my author newsletter. So you just plug in your email address, and when you do that, you'll be able to download my free novella. It's called Safe House. I'm totally excited for you to read it and let me know what you think. So why don't you do that right now? Go over to davesmail.com, put in your email address, get your free download. God bless. Hey, I just want to say thanks again for listening to By the Fire. Hey, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, would you do me a favor and leave me a review? Please be honest. Don't give me five stars if I don't deserve it. If you're not listening on Apple, would you head over to podchaser.com, search for By the Fire with Dave, you'll find me, and leave me a review there. I'd really appreciate it. You can follow us on social media, Instagram and Facebook, at By the Fire with Dave, Parlor at Author Dave Smail, MeWe, search for By the Fire with Dave, Twitter, yeah, I don't do Twitter. Is that on purpose? Yep. Or you can send me an email, info at davesmail.com. Also, did you know you could support this podcast? If you go to anchor.fm forward slash by the fire with Dave forward slash support, you can make a generous donation. And don't worry, as I've said before, any donation you make to this show 
I am not going to keep one dime of it. And you can read all about that in the show notes. Thank you so much again for listening to By the Fire. God bless. This is a work of fiction. Names, characters, businesses, places, events, and incidents are either the products of the author's imagination or used in a fictitious manner. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental.